I'm a lucky woman. And I'm a wonderful man. Homer and Marge Simpson's TV marriage has survived over 30 years of on-screen ups and downs, disagreements, temptations, and disasters. Yet at first glance, this couple appears fundamentally mismatched. What does Marge see in Homer anyway? He's boorish, selfish, and dim-witted. Oh, and how is education supposed to make me feel smarter? He can't take care of himself. I've been eating that thing for a week. I think the mayonnaise is starting to turn. He neglects his wife and children to spend his time drinking at the local bar. Hey, put a coaster under that and frequently making decisions that endanger his family. You took a new job in a strange town without discussing it with your family? Homer is less Marge's equal partner than a fourth kid she has to take care of. Yeah, Mom, you promised. Homer, I told you, don't call me Mom. So, on paper, Homer and Marge shouldn't work. Yet, film and TV is filled with these uneven couples, where an attractive, smart, competent woman stands by a husband who's less good-looking, less impressive, and contributes far less to the relationship. Here's our take on why TV wives settle for mediocre men, Oh, homie! why lopsided relationships can counterintuitively last, and what Homer and Marge teach us about the way real-life marriage sometimes works. In a good marriage, you never say I told you so. Which is lucky for me because you're always right. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Sundance Now, a streaming service featuring prestige drama, intoxicating romances, international thrillers, bone-chilling true crime, and so much more. Click the link in our description below, sundancenow.com, to get a free 30-day trial using the promo code THETAKE. Start watching something new today. I envy you and Homer. Why? If you ever met my ex-husband, you'd understand. All he ever did was eat, sleep, and drink beer. Your point being? Pop culture is crowded with examples of the lopsided couple. Maybe it's the classic beauty paired up with someone who's far less attractive. You are still the most handsome man in the world to me. I know, it mean, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the go-getting career woman who's hooked up with a slacker. You know, they say don't drink and drive? Uh-huh. Don't drink and bone. Wow or the prim, proper woman married to a man who's morally suspect. My daughter is a princess. She could have had anyone. We're used to seeing this impeccable wife put up with the misbehavior of her mediocre husband, cleaning up his messes and generally behaving more like his mother. All right, all right now, you're overstimulated. Let's get some beer in you and then it's right to bed. While examples of the mediocre TV husband range in the degree of their shortcomings, we can see a common profile for this character type. He lacks ambition, working dead-end jobs, with no hope or no desire of promotion. The plan called and said if you don't come in tomorrow, don't bother coming in Monday. Four-day weekend! He might have trouble holding on to the job he has already. Dad, get a job! You're trying to create drama because you're bored. He also tends to be lazy in his home life, content to leave the day-to-day -day chores or parenting duties to his wife. Yeah, well, you got the fun part right. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? You're a lousy dad. When not at work, he can be seen lounging around the house. Yeah, it's a lazy dog dangling afternoon. Shirking responsibilities. Oh, come on, Ray, I'm serious. All right, all right. How come I'm the noise checker outer? And failing to play the supportive, mature partner. My parents have separated. They're on the path to divorce. <laughs> you laugh? No, no, you no, no. Laugh? Others around him may marvel at how he landed such a desirable wife, and frequently her family was or remains firmly against the match. You cannot marry Homer Simpson! I forbid it! Despite all these evident flaws, he has an inflated sense of self. I am too smart! SMRT! Whether this misguided confidence stems from denial, ego, or an underactive brain that doesn't bother thinking too deeply about things, he tends to have positive self-esteem and to feel pretty good about his life. 
I'm hoping to get a piece of your sugar chicken later. <laughs> He barely seems to notice or care that his bad behavior can be tough for his family to endure. Sitcoms especially get mileage from the comedic tension created by pairing a subpar spouse with a competent one. No wife of mine is going to do dishes on Valentine's Day. We'll do these tomorrow. In one of TV's earliest examples, The Honeymooners, Jackie Gleason's Ralph Cramden was loud, arrogant, and often wrong, leaving it to the wisecracking Alice to put him in his place. Just as much of this as I can stand too, Ralph. Ralph was the blueprint for mediocre TV husbands that followed him. A model for everyone from Fred Flintstone and Peter Griffin to Kevin James on The King of Queens to, of course, Homer Simpson. Animation is built on plagiarism. If it weren't for someone plagiarizing the honeymooners, we wouldn't have the Flintstones. As the women's movement revolutionized culture in the 1970s and 1980s, TV housewives yielded to ambitious career women. In response to this cultural shift, mediocre husbands on sitcoms became even more like cartoons. <laughs> Many of these men seemed like relics of another time, with retrograde behaviors that symbolized a bygone era. It says that a woman should cleave into her husband. <laughs> right here in this house is where Edith's cleavage belongs. Their inadequacies were no longer to be celebrated, but mocked by the women who were forced to put up with them. Chicken plucker. <laughs> Pays more than a shoe salesman. Uh-oh. Must have good personality. <laughs> oh well. Marriage mismatches remain comedic gold to this day. Ah, geez, Lois, I just spent all morning on a boat with my friends drinking beer, telling jokes, and screwing around. How about a little me time? Take Beth and Jerry on Rick and Morty. This intelligent horse surgeon is saddled to the quintessential, underachieving, petulant spouse and won't quit him, much to the chagrin of her father. I remember the first time I saw her, I thought, I should get her pregnant and then she'll have to marry me. So given this portrait, why would any woman, let alone a real catch, fall for this guy? Marge, I need you more than anyone else on this entire planet could possibly ever need you. join a freak show just because the opportunity came along. You know, Marge, in some ways, you and I are very different people. In some ways, mediocre TV spouses are simply a reflection of what's going on in the real world. A 2019 study found that there are large deficits in the supply of potential male spouses because available men have less than ideal income, education levels, and employment. So it follows that, if they want to marry a man, many women do have to settle for someone who's less high achieving than they are. Multiply the denominator and the whole number, then add the product to the numerator. The sum will be the new numerator. Repeat the process with the second compound fraction. There's also the long observed phenomenon that opposites attract. The unlikely lovebirds met at Brown University. She, a brilliant exolinguistics major, he, a laid-back sewer surfer who didn't even know the meaning of exolinguistics. According to Psychology Today, these opposites might more accurately be described as complements, calling their differences the source of the most important aspect of any successful relationship, chemistry. When Homer and Marge first meet, she's a model student and a sharp, politically-minded star of their high school debate team. The first step to liberation is to free ourselves from these male-imposed shackles. Homer is decidedly not such an academic star. Hi, Homer, you life for English. <laughs> English, who needs that? I'm never going to England. These high school sweethearts find each other in detention, where they've landed for very different reasons. So uh, what are you in for? I'm a political prisoner. They have that intangible chemistry that arises from tension, recognizing almost instinctively that their imbalances actually complement each other. Because I'm sure we were meant to be together. Superficially, Homer and Marge reflect the classic shotgun marriage, two partners who are forced to commit by a pregnancy. Son, you gotta marry that girl! Because it's the honorable thing to do? No! Because you'll never do any better! But while the extenuating circumstances surely helped Homer make what is clearly the best decision of his life, They don't fully explain why intelligent, independent Marge agrees to marry him, nor do they account for her obvious affection for Homer. 
You don't know Homer like I do. He's sensitive and sweet. Marge, get your butt out here! So what does Marge see in him? While it might not make sense to anyone outside their marriage, Marge is obviously very physically attracted to Homer. Homie, you're good at lots of things. Like what? Like snuggling? Through thick and thin, with hair and without, Marge has always found Homer undeniably intriguing, even sexy. Homer, maybe it's the champagne talking, but I think you're pretty sexy. As Psychology Today observed, we are drawn to others out of needs and desires that are unfulfilled in our lives. Despite her prudish exterior, Marge has a wild side that longs to cut loose. I'd like a hot fudge sundae with whipped cream and some chocolate chip cheesecake and a bottle of tequila. In Homer's impulsivity and self-indulgence, perhaps she gets a vicarious thrill, a small taste of the freedom and excitement she denies herself. Studies have found that women are often attracted to men who display qualities like arrogance, stubbornness, and risk-taking, bad boys who seem like good candidates for sexual mating. Complimenting all his wild and stupid antics, though, crucially, Marge loves that, at his core, Homer is a sweet, loving man. You are how I pictured my husband. I am? Well, you may not look like Ted Bessel, but you're just as nice. She recognizes that his thoughtlessness isn't out of malice, and deep down, he has a good heart. Marge, from the first moment I saw you, I never wanted to be with anyone else. I don't have much to offer you except all my love." In fact, she chose him over her prom date, Artie, because she realized Artie was a jerk and Homer was decent. I got a problem. Once you stop this car, I'm gonna hug you and kiss you, and then I'll never be able to let you go. And most fundamentally, their dynamic speaks to Marge's deepest desire, to feel needed. I know now what I can offer you that no one else can! complete and utter dependence. Marge is a nurturing figure who derives most of her fulfillment from her family. The only thing I'm high on is love. Love for my son and daughters. And although it can be stressful, Marge not so secretly enjoys being a caretaker to her family, which includes Homer. Marge! There's a spider near my car key. You did the right thing by telling me. In the real world, marriage usually changes men. A 2018 University of Georgia study found that most men become more conscientious and responsible after becoming husbands. This might explain why the idea that women can fix men through commitment remains a common trope. A guy is a lump like this donut. <laughs> okay, so first, you gotta get rid of all the stuff his mom did to him, and then you gotta get rid of all that macho crap that they pick up from the beer commercials. <laughs> And then there's my personal favorite, the male ego. And perhaps this is another reason why the competent woman is drawn to that mediocre man. He's clearly got room for improvement. So he's a bit of a fixer-upper, so he's got a few flaws. With encouragement and tough love, her thinking goes, she can mold her husband into a better version of himself, thus yielding her a sense of achievement in her marriage. He was loud, crude, and piggish. But I worked hard on him, and now he's a whole new person. Mom? He's a whole new person, Lisa. Mediocre husbands on TV are a different story, though. They have to stay who they are to keep things entertaining. Homer, I told you this morning, no guns at the dinner table. Homer Simpson hasn't really changed at all, which is, of course, a hallmark of the show. It seems like I've been wearing the same red dress forever. Fans have wondered for years why Marge hasn't just wised up and divorced Homer already. And although the pair has come close, something always brings them back together. I know you love me. We don't need to get married again. Yes, we do. I got us a divorce this afternoon. What? Ultimately, it's the continuing, fixed opposition that fuels their solid partnership. As Psychology Today puts it, the tension between opposites produces the passion that sustains, deepens, and enlivens relationships. Homer, is this the way you pictured married life? Yeah, pretty much. Except we drove around in a van solving mysteries. 
After more than 30 seasons of not improving and still challenging each other, they remain the most resilient fictional relationship on television. Best kiss of my life. Best kiss of your life so far. Marriage is a lot like an orange. First, you have the skin, then the sweet, sweet innards. So what lessons can the rest of us learn from this perfectly imperfect, balanced by imbalance, marriage? First of all, choosing a subpar partner may not be the worst thing. A 2008 study published in Journal of Family Psychology found that both spouses behaved more positively in relationships in which wives were more attractive than their husbands. I love being married. I got a good deal. <laughs> Must be hell on you. Yeah. The Simpsons union has survived in large part due to managed expectations. Marge knows that Homer will screw up, and she sets the bar accordingly. The only thing I asked you to do for this party was put on clothes and you didn't do it. But she also knows that Homer means well and wants to make her happy, so she's able to share her feelings when he disappoints her. But last night, you didn't just cross that line, you threw up on it. In return, Homer's willingness to listen and admit when he's wrong, and their ability to have this kind of open communication, make the difference between a marriage that's difficult but loving and one that's doomed. Even when you yell at me, I can see love in your eyes. Stick to the subject. Haha, uh -huh, you love me. <sighs> On a deeper, human level, couples like The Simpsons also expose that we all have our flaws, even someone as outwardly perfect as Marge Simpson. For the first time in our marriage, I can finally look down my nose at you. You have a gambling problem. Seeing only the binary cliché of the mediocre husband and the long-suffering wife is reductive, and doesn't reflect the nuances of most real-world relationships. Ultimately, Homer and Marge have stayed together for so many years because they get each other. Wow, Marge, you really do understand me. They're complementary opposites who accept each other's differences and enjoy the passion sparked by the tension that creates. It's like you're from Venus and you're from Mars. Oh, sure, give me the one with all the monsters. Perhaps most importantly, Homer knows just how fortunate he is. Love isn't hopeless. Look, maybe I'm no expert on this subject. But there was one time I got it right. And Marge feels gratitude too. I am lucky. I have a husband and three wonderful children. So after three decades and counting, Homer and Marge give us all hope that even the most mismatched couple can find their own imperfect harmony. There's a reason two people come together and stay together. There's something they give each other that nobody else can give them. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Sundance Now. Whether you're looking for true crime, period pieces, or binge-worthy romances, Sundance Now has it all. One show you can check out on Sundance Now is A Discovery of Witches, starring Matthew Good and Teresa Palmer. The series follows the unlikely alliance between a brilliant witch and a vampire, as their deepening relationship threatens to shake the fragile peace that exists between the species. A Discovery of Witches was named one of Rotten Tomatoes' best shows for 2019. Click the link in our description below, SundanceNow.com, to get a free 30-day trial using the promo code THETAKE. And you can watch anywhere and cancel anytime. So try it out today.